morning everyone. Very nice to see you and I'm pleased to be with you in your school. And as you can see here I am in my special writing room. I've had a very interesting three days here because I've just been doing a thing called video conferencing which of course is completely new to me and I've been sitting at this table uh, speaking into a camera and that has been relayed to schools and I've been able to see audiences of children sitting at the end of a television screen and we've had a marvellous time uh, me reading to children, asking them questions, and the wonderful thing is they've been able to respond from places like um, Doncaster and Bridlington. Stroke the cat, stroke the cat, and lift it from the floor. Stroke the cat, stroke the cat, then shake hands with its paw. Stroke the cat, stroke the cat, scratch its head once more. Stroke the cat, stroke the cat, then shoo it through the... Well, I was born in Scotland many, many, many years ago. Um, my father moved into England to do his work and I followed him. Eventually um, took to teaching, became a teacher, and I suppose I started writing uh, plays and poems and stories just for the youngsters in my classes at school. And I knew I'd um, become a writer when the head teacher said at one staff meeting, and of course, Wes will write the Christmas play. And I've been on that roundabout ever since. Uh, inspiration comes from all around you. I often get asked this um, question by children. They say, what, uh, what inspires you to write a poem? And I often say, well, when somebody promises me some money, which, uh, which would be like a poem being commissioned. But it is, it is marvellous to be able to sit down just with an, an empty sheet of paper and just see if you can create something in words that's never been done on planet Earth before. And there you can be as um, original as somebody like Roald Dahl or old poets like John Macefield or even William Shakespeare. You can be the first person ever to create something in just that combination of words. I know when I became a head teacher, I often used to use poems in uh, the morning assembly and I could just bring them in. Uh, some were very short, some would be a bit longer and you could bring them in to just um, illuminate a certain subject area, like two children who've fallen out and are squabbling, and you could find a poem that was appropriate to that. I think if anybody wants to start writing poems and to be a published author, well, there's only one way to do it, and you have to actually sit down and write the material. Could be poems, could be a story, and then I always try to present it in the best possible way, so that a new book I'm doing actually looks like a book. And then, of course, it's marvellous to be invited to go into schools as a visiting author and actually try new poems out uh, with the children. Um, on these video links we've just been doing uh, in the past two or three days here, I've actually tried one or two brand new poems, and you can always judge a reaction, and that helps you to um, either complete or polish or rewrite a piece. Uh, Jack's killed the giant. That's what people said. Truth is, the fallen ogre wasn't dead, but lay unconscious with a huge lump on his head. He rose when Jack and all had gone to bed. With aching brain, the giant stomped away and walked the world for nine years and one day. Where mountains towered, he stopped. This looks okay, he growled, and made his bed in boulder clay. Hill walkers found broad footprints now and then, but no one's ever seen the giant's den. The people said, beware, he'll come again, and left poor Jack to watch and wonder when.